Hi, this is Tanya from Love Buddha Tarot, back with the daily cards for the 5th of September 2017. How are you all doing? Mercury actually goes direct today. I said yesterday I mentioned it going retrograde. Sorry, I got my words mixed up. You knew what I meant, but yeah. Mercury goes direct today and tomorrow we have the full moon in Pisces. So basically, um, it's we've had a lot of fire. We've had the moon in Leo. So there's been a lot of fire going on, you know, been raging out of control, to be honest. Um, but the full moon tomorrow in Pisces is this is the water being poured on it. OK, it's almost like you can hear the sizzle of this fire sort of burning away, you know, and there being a clarity, there being a calmness coming, you know, and a lovely dreaminess as well. A lot of emotions, but they're not these intense emotions that we've been experiencing. Now, Spirit said to me this morning that I needed to tell you this. It was a situation that I've had. For those of you that don't want to listen to this, okay, um, I will timestamp this video. I will timestamp it to tell you when the actual cards start, okay? But there's an experience that I've experienced over the last couple of days and Spirit said that I needed to share it with you, okay? So those that want to listen, listen. Those that don't, just, um, just you know, jump, jump ahead to the cards because the cards are so powerful today as well. Uh, so basically, this this weekend has been a tough one. I, I've mentioned and I know a few of you have, have, have had the same... This August has been so, so tough. I have never, when I've, I've sat and thought about it, I've never known a month like this, you know, in all of my years of spiritual practice. You know, there is nothing that has affected me as much as this. Um, at the weekend, it was starting to come to a head. I could feel it. I was feeling uneasy. I was feeling disjointed. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because... I want you to know that I go through it too, you know, it's like I don't have all of the answers, I, yes, spirit give me the knowledge, but often putting it into play within the 3D world, you know, it is a struggle, and you know, the last sort of week or so, it, the struggle has been hard, okay, um, so yeah, it all started to come to a head this, this weekend, and on Sunday night, I'd done the video for Monday, and I went to bed and I got my crystals and I said, right, I need to sort this out because I could feel myself going off kilter and stuff like that. And I said, I need to um, sort this out. So I held my crystals. I said to spirit, I done a meditation and I said to spirit, I want you to show me the future. OK, I want full so that I know where I'm going. OK, this is it. Please do this for me. I need it, you know. The reason I needed that is because I realized I detoured into fear. I'd actually got off balance. I'd, I'd, there's some, there's a lot of change happening in my life at the moment, you know, a lot of big, big changes and a lot of people going out of it. A lot of people, you know, it's, it's, it's just, yeah, there's, there's been a lot going on. Um, and I realized I was scared. So I was wanting to project. I needed that safety blanket. I needed that comfort so that I knew what was happening, so that I felt in control. Okay. So this is it. Massive, massive ego. You know, I dived right into that part of ego. I really, really did. But this was a control thing. You know, it was like, right, I need, I need to do this. So I went with the intent, right. Okay. Show me, show me what's coming in the future. <laughs> like I say, you know, spirit have funny ways of working. I went to sleep that night and had the most horrific sleep I've ever had in my life. I was literally, I fell asleep at half past 10. I was awake at half past 12. I then lay from half past 12 till half past five, beating myself up, giving myself the kicking of my life in my head, you know, total ego central. Uh, my ego was winning. Um, and then, you know, this, this carried on. I think I had another half hour sleep and then, you know, it started again uh, yesterday morning. But basically what happened was everything that I got shown was my past. I asked Spirit to show me the future and they said, we're showing you the past. And they showed me every dark part of my past. Every time I'd been betrayed, every time my trust had been um, abused, everybody that had hurt me, everybody that had left my life via death or via circumstances, everybody who I'd admitted, omitted out of my life as well. They were all there. It was like everybody came in and sort of ganged up on me in a way. 
And this brought up some massive, massive issues, like to the point of, whoa, it was, it was so, so bizarre, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of pain came up, you know, and a lot of fear as well. So like I say, I, I, I lay in bed and yesterday morning I was not in a good place at all. And I, I phoned my friend who, uh, my best friend who is living in France at the moment and God, I'm missing her so much. I didn't realise how much. And she said, what's up? And I said, I need you to tell me I'm being a dickhead. And she went, well, yeah, you're a dickhead, but what's up? Um, and I just spewed out all of this stuff that was going on in my head, all of these crazy, irrational thoughts, these thoughts that weren't true, this self-abuse, this, you know, this this pity party, you know, this this everything, everything that I was feeling. I just offloaded onto her and she was just on the other side of the phone and she took it all and then she said right okay you're being a dickhead she then challenged me and said all of these people that have left your life or you have got rid of them or whatever you've done that for a reason you know so you're feeling alone now I was feeling very very alone you know but it was because I broke my connection with spirit you know and um she put everything into order for me you know she didn't she couldn't make it better you know these were thoughts that were going on in my head but she rationalized it for me and she was there and she she just held space for me you know and that is why I have so much love and admiration for this girl she is She's the most unspiritual girl going. She doesn't believe in any of this stuff, yet she is she is my guru. She is from from knowing her, she has been my guru and she you know, I'm 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 I love her dearly and I'm a massively, massively valued part of my life. She said to me, You need to go to the beach. That's what you need. Get up today and go to the beach. So I did. I went to the beach yesterday and the beach is my place where I release and I took my dog. And he worked himself something not right. I didn't have a peaceful time at the beach. He barked, he cried, he got on my nerves. He was, he done everything. He was, he was like a naughty little kid. So again, this made me go more into myself. I ended up coming home. I cried. I literally, I cried an ocean, you know, never mind uh, going to the ocean. Um, but you know, it, it, it was there and I, I knew, I, I saw, I, I want to say it was a breakdown in some way, I want to say that, but it was the last couple of hours of this solar eclipse and this was stuff that I've been pushing down and not wanting to feel and it just burst open, you know, and it was like I say, you know, water, emotions, they are the strongest force that there, there is. Um... And they just, it was like floodgates opening, you know. So I went to bed last night, battered, bruised, feeling very, very alone. I woke up this morning and instantly I felt better. So I lay, well, oh, sorry, before I went to bed last night, I said to Spirit, I, I swore at them and I said, you know, you, you fucking help me. <laughs> you know, you help me here. I work for you. You know, I am doing what you're asking me to. But please, you know, please, you need I need clarity here. I need some help from you. So if anybody has tried to get in touch with me this weekend and I haven't responded to them, that is the reason why I've been going through my own stuff, okay? So I woke up this morning and Spirit were like, all oh, right, okay, yeah, you've stopped the tantrum, Tanya, have you? So they, they, they just stood and allowed me to do it. They hadn't given me answers. They hadn't, they knew this had to come out. And this is what they said to me. You asked us to show you your future. So we had to show you your past. You know, and in order to see that, you now know how strong you are and you now know that you don't need anything or anybody to get through your life because of what you have lost in the past. You know, well, I needed to have this realisation. I needed to have this spiritual kick up the arse to drive me forward and give me determination that I am not going to go into fear and that these changes that are coming are actually for me. You know, they're coming for me. They're what I wanted. They're what I've prayed for. You know, so this was me just being human. And the reason I'm saying this is because I want you to know that I am. So when you're saying you're struggling, you know, I feel it. You know, I'm an empath. I'm, I'm a massive empath. And the thing is, with empathy, when you are an empath, you feel. And, and you know, I, I said to my godmother yesterday, I, I, I said, you know, I, I feel too deeply. 
And she said, there's never too deeply, Tanya. This is what makes you you. This is how you can give love to so many because you feel this deeply and never, ever want that away, you know, because you wouldn't be you if it wasn't like this. But yes, you will, you will hurt deeply. And these last few weeks, I've seen so much ego. I've seen so much. It's like my eyes have became really sensitive to the way of the world and and what is going on with the world and the falseness and the fakeness and the superficialness of the world and social media and how everybody is, you know, putting this mask on and stuff like that. And you see it. And when you see this, you know, as an empath, if you are an empath, you will know that fake makes you hurt. Anything that is fake, anything that is fake and not real, you know, it actually causes you pain, you know, and this is it. I've been sort of so sensitive around that. So everything that has been coming has been sort of for a reason, really. It's made me realise what I do want out of life and what I don't want out of life and why I have had to let people go, you know, and why I have the people that I hold close, close, you know. So it's made me realise that, yes, I am sensitive to all, to that life, that that fake sort of superficial life. And I don't want that being brought into mine. And I've allowed that to, you know, I've been sucked into it. And this is what happens, you know. So I just want to say this to say to you, you know, that it's okay to have a flip out every now and then, you know, like I say, a breakdown leads to a breakthrough. I am now, my boundaries are up, you know, and I can only give what is healthy for me to give as well, you know, whereas I've been trying to give too much and I need to sort of shield what I take on from other people as well, you know. So, like I say, massive learning curve. Woke up this morning, the song James Taylor, Taylor, Sunny Skies was playing in my head. My dog made me laugh as soon as I seen him, you know, and I felt so much love for him. And now I am so excited for what is to come. But that is only because I allowed myself to have this, these feels yesterday, you know, and like I say, I cried and I, you know, and I kicked and I screamed and I, I done everything that I probably shouldn't have done. But this is, this is me just being human. Okay. So I just wanted to say that in case any of you are struggling, you know, it's okay. That struggle will end and this too shall pass. Okay. Just ride that wave, you know, whatever it is, ride that wave. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> I've, 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 sh I've shared that, you know, it's, it, like I say, some people might not want to be, hear me going on about my shit, but you know, spirit said to do it because, you know, that would help somebody, you know, or some of you. So there you go with that. So, right, today's cards. Now, very often I make notes with the cards today. I haven't, you know, it's just like, right, go with it, you know, just just free fall and free form as well. And like I say, what this has made me realise is that when I'm detouring into fear or when I'm putting barriers up or anything like that, I am not being authentically me, you know, and that just doesn't work for me at all. It's like, if I cannot be authentic, then I cannot be there, okay? I, I, I just cannot. So what's interesting today is two cards came out um, and the first one is the Six of Cups, okay? So the Six of Cups always looks to the past, okay? This this is what it is. It's always us looking to the past. So this could be nostalgia. This could be memories. You know, this could be, like I say, what I had, they're not always nice memories. But the the word that's coming on with this is pleasure, and what I'm getting with this card is that it's like an old movie and it's like we often replay the past in our head as a movie, okay? But we take out the parts that we don't like. So we take out the wrong. We take out the times we've been wronged. We take out the times we felt really shitty because of somebody else's actions or whatever. And we, we sort of clip them. We edit them. So we edit that movie to our choosing. So when we play it back, it works in our favour. Or that's what we think, okay? And it doesn't because when we look at the past through rose-tinted eyes and we think everything was so much nicer then, this makes us stop being in the present, okay? And what this is saying is, yes, 
there was good times in the past, okay? But if we have a look at that, it actually looks like it's been water damaged here. And I feel that that is coming from tears. But we don't like to focus that much. We, If a partner leaves us, we look and we think, God, my life was so much better then. It wasn't. If it was that good, they wouldn't still be in your life. You know, we look at this... We have this rose-tinted glow around how the past was, you know? And a lot of times, this can keep us stuck there because we think if somebody has gone from our life or something has changed, we think that we are being wronged, we are being punished, we are being let down, and we are being sort of kept from getting something that made us happy. But there is nothing ever taken away from us, you know, that is meant for us, you know? So this, this past is good in a way because it lets us let go of it. But we need to take the rose tinted glasses off and we need to see the past as it truly was. OK, rather than actually feeling that it was this wonderful, wonderful place. You know, I mean, the problems that you're experiencing now. Sorry. The problems you're experiencing now. In five years' time, you will probably forget these and you will probably forget how you're feeling. That way I felt yesterday when I was all lost of hope and doom and gloom and even the sea wasn't nice to me, you know, and all of that. In five years' time, in three weeks' time, I'll forget how I felt then, you know. But I will remember sort of the happy things because it's easier to focus on them. So like I say, you know, whatever is going on at the moment, whatever you are struggling with, you know, it will pass. Whatever has happened in the past, it will pass. But let it go and stop trying to hang on to nostalgia, okay? A lot of relationships are actually built on nostalgia. Or what they're saying here as well, a lot of times we can have somebody in our present that does something, that triggers something that somebody done in the past and we can then attack them for it. Now, this isn't what they've, that isn't this person or what they've done that we actually feel dodgy about or we feel as shady or we feel is, you know, it makes us feel uneasy. It's what somebody else has done. So we can't expect somebody else, we can't expect somebody to pay for somebody else's mistakes or something bad that somebody else has done. Yet we project that onto this person. You know, and it's like, yeah, but you're all the same, you know. Oh, this is it. This is my story happening again. This is what happened last time. Look at the part you're playing in it, you know. So like I say, be very careful what is happening now that you are not putting on to somebody something that has happened in the past to you as well. You know, because this is what this is talking about, you know. Don't let the past destroy your future. This is it, you know. This is about the now. It's about being present, okay. Don't worry about about too much about the future because the future doesn't exist anymore it is this being in the present when you stop that being in the present and being in the now this is when the discord starts this is when you feel uneasy this is when you feel sick this is when you feel scared this is when you feel sad you know stay in the present i was watching Eckhart Tolle last night and he was talking about this you know and saying when we're out of the present you know, we are out of ourselves, we're out of alignment, we're out of the connection with spirit, you know, and this is when we have fear and panic and, you know, not feeling good or not feeling good enough. So this is saying, you know, look back to the past, but don't live there. Don't try and stay there. We cannot get it back no matter what's happened and see the past as it really was, not how you actually wish it to be. OK, so see the proper movie. Don't see the edited version. OK, we then have the eight of cups. Now, what is interesting at this, if, if we can see the girls at the beach there, what is interesting with this card is within traditional tarot, I always see the eight of cups as a great card because the eight of cups is you actually turning your back on what you know to go in search of fulfillment. OK, so you are making this choice. You are saying, I'm not happy where I am. I need to make changes, you know, and that may leave behind people, places, situations, whatever. But you know in your heart of hearts that that is what you must do. But in this card, in this deck, the word that comes with this is abandonment, okay? So the Eight of Cups, straight away, can you see how it's changed? 
Like complete 180 straight away just by using a different word or just by looking at it in a different way. So rather than this being exciting, this is now abandonment. What am I losing? You know, because when you are abandoned, you feel very alone. Okay. A lot of us have rejection issues from from the past that can go way, 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 way deep, you know, and we are scared of that abandonment again. So what we do is we cling on to what we have that isn't really for our highest good, you know, and we end up sort of feeling very alone, even when we are surrounded by people, you know, so that's, that's worse. It's if you're going to be alone, be alone, you know, that that's it. People and places, you know, and, and things, it's like, one of my favourite movies in the world is Harold and Maud. And I love it. It's so, so beautiful. And there's a place where, where part where she talks in it and she says that, you know, people are incidental, you know. They're, what's the word she uses? Oh, it's, it's completely gone out of my head. Yeah, they're not integral, you know. So if somebody comes into your life, let them come. If somebody's going out of your life, let them go. You know, don't try and cling. Know that you are ultimately alone. And I know a lot of people that panics them, you know, but we were born alone and we will die alone. And the people that we meet on the way are like characters. You know, they're like characters in our story. If you see your life as a book, as a novel, okay, there's a start, there's a middle, there's an end, there's all the fillers in between. But we get so caught up in what could probably only be two pages, you know, when you actually read the full book and we get, you know, we, we, we get scared, like what's going to happen? But this is when you read a book, you know, there is always suspense in it, isn't it? That's what makes a good book. There is suspense, there is love, there is laughter, there is hardship, there is you're on the edge of your seat reading it going, right, what happens next? And then when you get to the end of the book, you look back and you can see, all oh, right, that's why that happened. Something might have happened in the first chapter that you didn't understand, but you get to the end of the book and you're like, right, it all makes sense now. And this is what is happening with your life. If you look at your life as this book, so you take in the twists and turns, you take in the suspense and the uneasiness because that is where you get the thrill. Okay, so this is saying that people will come into your book, characters will come into your book, and some of them will stay until the end, some of them will be there until the end, some of them will play a little part, and they might only be in one page, some of them might be in a full chapter, you know, but it, it's sounding cliche, people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime, and when you understand which is which, you know, then you will be able to go through life easier because you will just glide along. You won't try and look back. If somebody comes in for a season, you see why they have been in your life. You know, you see what part, what answer you, what, what question you put to the universe, what need you needed fulfilled that that person has came in and fulfilled for that time. But as with all seasons, they change and that person will naturally go away. So let them. OK, if they come in for sort of a reason, they could be there for a short time, but there will be something in that time that you have learned or they have learned. There will be something to wake you up. And if they're there for a lifetime, you know, then they are part of your soul tribe, you know, and this is what is happening at the moment. We need we are all being pushed towards members of our soul tribe okay we need to evolve there is a massive need for evolvement within the earth at the moment so please don't look that you are ever abandoned okay spirit never leave you you know and everybody who is meant to come into your life will and everybody who is meant to leave your life will as well OK, so instead of feeling alone there, just think, you know, right, I, I'm free to do what I want. You know, when you have other people around, a lot of times it can give you restrictions and stuff like that. And even when you have people around, you need to still be free. If your freedom is sort of put on the line because you have certain people around in your life, you really need to question if they are the people that you need around you okay because freedom you know is our birthright and if somebody is telling us 
that we can't do this or we we can't be authentic or we need to stop this or we have a feeling that we feel we can't put to somebody in case they get upset or whatever that is us not being free you know and our life is about us finding freedom again we've had too much restrictions put on us by society by the pressures of society by ourselves to fit in and conform you know when at the end of the day you know fuck confirmation we are born to be individuals okay and this is what this card is saying you know when you feel that you are a band you're not you're just standing strong by yourself Okay, and you don't need anybody to get through your life. If people are there, great. I'm not saying go off and live like a hermit. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is don't rely on other people to give you strength, support or happiness. Because you can only get that from yourself, you know. And when these feelings come, go deep with them, you know. Go deep because that is what life's about. Life is not about paddling in the shallow end, you know. Life is not about living a shallow life. Life is about diving in at the deep end and experiencing and going to the depths of yourself and the depths of other people, you know, because this is where you will start to buzz and this is when your soul will start to sing, okay? Sorry, <laughs> like I say, this is what they're coming through. And there, the Osho Zen Tarot card is adventure. So yes, you might be scared, but look at that. Be like a child. When you were a child, you were kicked out of the house on a morning. It was like, right, go and, you know, it's I've got nothing to do. Find something to do. Now everybody sits on mobile phones and stuff like that. And it's bollocks. You know, go out on an adventure. Look at that. She is following the rainbow, that child. You know, she is walking into the unknown. But there is magic there. You know, and in, in, when in, you're in an adventure, you don't know where you're going. You don't sit and plan an adventure and go, right, OK, so I'm going to do this, do this, do this. And then this will be the outcome. That's not an adventure. That's fucking regiment. You know, an adventure is where you say, right, OK, what are we doing today? I don't know, but I bet you any money it'll be fun, you know, and that's it. And you make the adventure, you know, that is what gets your your heart racing, that is what brings the excitement when you don't know the end, yet so many of us are focused on this this end, wanting to know what is going to happen, myself included, you know, but that takes the adventure out, you don't plan an adventure, you just do an adventure, you know, there was, I found a word the other day and, um, it, it was really great, it was, uh, codywomple, <laughs> and I really like that word, and it's to go, in a direction, um, to have a purpose, but in a vague direction sort of thing. And I done that the other week. I was driving and I, I sort of knew where I wanted to go, but I, I just kept taking wrong turns and everything. But that was all part of the fun because, you know, you, a lot of people say that they're lost. You might, you're not lost. You just don't know where you're going. And there's a big, big difference, you know, so you will end up where you need to be. And, you know, sometimes that is, that is the fun of it, okay? So like I say, this fear, this fear of the unknown, this not knowing where you're going, treat it with excitement and be like a child as well, you know? Because a child believes, you know? they A child doesn't have cynicism. A child isn't scared of getting hurt again. A child isn't any of that, you know? They go into things in an innocent way and they are truthful, okay? So, like I say, follow that rainbow. That is where the adventure is, you know, and it's it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I don't know why I'm getting the teddy bears picnic playing there. If you go down in the woods today, you're in for a big surprise. I don't know what that means. But, yeah, this is it. Go out in nature. You know, you are not going to sit in on these mobile phones or whatever the only thing that's going to evolve there is your thumbs. You know, that's that's all that's going to happen. So yeah, get real, because what is happening, because you are in this state of falseness or, you know, all of this craziness and feeling like you're a band, feeling like the past was better and the, the future's never going to get any better and whatever, you've got yourself into a state of analysis paralysis where you're not taking action, you know, so your thinking has gone to overthinking and you have boxed yourself in you know, with your thoughts, and your thoughts and your ego are telling you to keep yourself safe, saying, oh, it's, it's, it's a big scary world out there, you know, don't go there, 
Keep with what you know. You don't want to trust that person. No, no, you don't trust people, you know, and all of this. And all that does is segregate you. You know, when this is about unity, this is about us coming together. And this is what is happening, you know. And we are a spiritual community. We are evolved beings. We are waking up and realizing that other people are important to us. Like I said, they're not integral, you know, they're incidental. But we need that connection. You know, without that connection, you know, everybody is connected to Wi-Fi, but they're losing the connection to each other and they're losing the connection to people, you know, and that is not living. That is existing. And it's living again in this fake, fake world, you know. And like I say, it's shallow. You know, you want to go deep. This is what you need, you know. And when you go deep, that is when you find out these wonderful things about other people and these wonderful things about yourself. And there's people that have been married years and, you know, are friends with people years and they don't know anything about them because they've never taken the time to know that person. They sit in front of a TV and that is the, the night, you know, okay, right, what, should I change the channel? And that is the amount of conversation. It's like, no, you want to know what that person's biggest fears are. You want to know what, you know, their, their best experience was. You want to know, do they believe in life after death? You want to know all of this about somebody, you know, because that will show you who they truly are. It's not the clothes they wear, you know, or anything like that. It's about seeing the soul of somebody rather than seeing this superficial meat suit. Because this means fuck all. This means nothing, you know, absolutely nothing. It's what's inside that is important, you know. And every single one of us has these unfulfilled yearnings and everything inside that when we can actually feel free to put them out there and trust another person with them and that person understands them, you know, that is what living is is all about. So then, like I say, the overthinking, stop the overthinking. I'm going to read this one from the book because I thought it was such a beautiful image, okay? And it's from the Visions of Oracle here. And this is, it's providing shelter, you know, and it's like shelter from the storm, you know, Bob Dylan, that's, you know, uh, come in, I'll give you shelter from the storm. Beautiful, beautiful song that. And this is saying, you know, home is a shelter from all so storms, all sorts of storms. But you only ever find home within yourself. Home is not a person or a place or anything. It is within yourself. And when you feel authentic, when you are aligned, when you are truly you, that is when you are at home. And that is where you will find your shelter. You can't run to other people to ask them to look after you, you know, or anything like that. You find it within yourself. And then the other people come along and say, hey, you know, that looks really cozy there. Can I, can I come in? Can I join, you know? And that is when it's beautiful. So with this card, what it says is our relationship with the natural world is at its lowest ebb. And as humans, we are becoming increasingly detached. Our physical lives may have been made more comfortable by our technical advances, but our spiritual lives may be diminished. A woman transforms her body with a symbolic tree as she offers support and safety to nature. The sincerity of her offer is accepted and returned with complete trust. A warm glow is generated from that interaction. In the distance, a unicorn notices and looks on approvingly, but ironically, there is a sad poignancy in his attention. It is that this magical creature has seen so few of such acts. Despite the overall trend here, there is hope that, it, that we are at least aware of our damaging imprint and an increase in acknowledgement and desire to readdress the imbalances. So this makes so much sense, you know. Like I say, this unicorn is there, the magic. If the magic is in the woods, okay? The magic is in nature. But how many people does that unicorn see going into the woods now? You know, how many people does it see sort of venturing out there? Because people tend to stay, you know, they stay behind a computer screen. They stay on their phones, you know, stuff like that. They go to a cinema, they go to a pub, they go to anywhere where there is distraction rather than actually just feeling or being with that other person. When you go somewhere like that, where there is quiet, you know, and you're with another person, you talk. You talk, you feel, you hear the birds, 
all of that, you know, and this is what's beautiful, you know, you can sit and chat to somebody for ages online and blah, 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 you know, how many people now have thousands of friends on social media, yet they sit alone every night, you know, there is no real connection, it is false, it is fake, you know, this is real, standing there, touching a tree, you know, touching a tree and being at one in nature, whether you're there by yourself or there with another person, this is saying that is what's needed. We have a woodpecker there and it's like this woodpecker is peck, peck, pecking at you, you know, and saying, come on, this is what you need. Go barefoot somewhere, you know, feel the earth. That's it. Feel the earth beneath your feet. That is when you will feel, you know, a lot of feelings are false because they're, they're in our imagination because we live in this like sort of made up world and this superficial world, you know. I went in um, to the garage yesterday after I come back from the the, uh, the beach and the guy behind the counter said, oh, do you want a free newspaper? Paper? We're giving away the Sun newspaper. Do you want it? And I went, I've just been to the beach to clear my head. I do not want it being filled with shit like that, you know. That's what I'm getting away from. So this is it, you know, look at what you're filling your head with. Is it real or is it fake, you know? Because when you go in the forest, when you go to the beach, when you go to the sea, when you go in nature, none of that is fake. There's not fake trees. They're not plastic trees. They're not anything like that. They are living beings, you know, that actually help us and lift our mood and lift our vibration. And if we have a look, this person, if she's got... There's a bird's nest there with two eggs in it. And it's like she is desperately trying to keep this safe, you know. So there's a lot of pressure on her. So by going in the woods, she can put that down in its natural habitat, you know. And she can actually know that it is sort of protected and that it is cared for because that is what mother nature does that is what Gaia does to us you know she is there to care for us so whenever you feel alone and you want that comfort and you want that mother's touch you go into nature because mother nature is always there for you father sky is always looking down protecting you and you will feel spirit if you feel disconnected okay what you need to do is turn that wi-fi off and get into nature because that is where you have instant connection and it doesn't cost you a penny you know if we have a look at the the um, tree on her back as well. This is where you will feel rooted, where you will feel grounded. When I done my San Pedro experiment, this is what um, the San Pedro was showing me, how this is life and life is like a tree and all these branches and everything come off, which coincides with this, how these people come into our lives and go and whatever. But that doesn't stop the structure of the trunk and the roots you know, they are there because they are ours. So we need to stay rooted. We need to stand, you know, strong in ourselves. And like I say, all of these little stories and pathways and twists and turns and whatever will happen because that is life, you know. And like I say, there will be dark times because if you think of yourself as a tree, there will be times when you're barren, you know, because the, the leaves will fall because that is a cycle in nature. But then there will be new buds and then you will bloom again and your colours will change continuously through this, you know. And like I say, just go into nature today. It's autumn starting and it's beautiful. But the thing with autumn, you know, is it shows us there is a beauty in letting go as well. Them trees are changing colour. They're going beautiful and then they're just instantly falling off that tree. There's no clinging. There's no anything like that. It's a part of nature. And then there will be, you know, when they're bare, you know, the winter time. But then springtime will come around again and there will be roots, you know. And then we wait for, all oh, right, what is going to happen now? And then the summer comes and everything's in full bloom and we're happy. So this is it. See your life as a cycle, you know, and it's, it's a season. And this is what we need to do. And this is what I feel it's bringing in massively here. It's number 23. 23 is very, very significant you know, um, and look at that, there's a beautiful waterfall, it's like let it flow here, you know, believe in magic, go on a hunt to find a unicorn, that's what you, that's what you need, you know, you might never find one, you might never see one, but you will have fun looking, 
So this is it. If you get the chance, go in nature, go to the woods. You know, this is where you will be healed. And this is where you will find your answers. So I hope that made sense to you. Um, sorry, it's a bit of a completely different one today, but... You know, I give what they tell me to. I'm going to pull a spirit card, last one, and then we're going because I've gone on and on and on and on today. Um, so, wow, you know, what a 48 hours. <laughs> it's been so, so bizarre. It's like, what's that? Um, I think it's a crowded house song, isn't it? Four seasons in one day. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I've got. I've gone through all of the cycles in this last 48 hours. But you know what? It's... I, I feel amazing now, okay? So no matter how bad you're feeling, know that it will pass, okay? And it will it will change and things will get better, okay? But go back to your roots, go back into nature, you know, this is the only way you're gonna you're gonna ground yourself, okay? And try and go barefoot as well because you know barefoot is is the best. Right, we've got this card again. Moon goddess. You know, this is it. We keep getting this card. And this is, like I say, we have the Pisces full moon tomorrow. And the Pisces full moon. Pisces is dreamy. Pisces is the port of the astrological um, signs, you know. I love Pisces. It's like, you know, Pisces are dreamers. And I said yesterday, when dreamers unite, you know, that's when we change the world. There's a romanticism. There's a beauty. There's a simplicity comes with Pisces okay and this is what we are working towards we are not working towards getting more we are working towards getting less because the less we have the less problems we have you know so it's going back to basics it's going back to nature you know it's actually getting in tune with you know the 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 stages of the moon getting in tune with the earth you know and actually reconnecting there as well so big thing on reconnecting today is coming through and what this is saying is a time of necessary upheaval has been a blessing in disguise the dust is settling and wait while the gift will reveal itself and this is it i feel this is this month and look at this you know look at all of these it's like these are like connecting waves it's like you know we are all connected we just you know sometimes if you think where if you think of the stars, you can't see the stars where there's a lot of light pollution. And if you think of where in a city or something like that, you know, all of the Wi-Fi's, the electricity, everything like that. You think of all these invisible sort of, I don't know what you call them, invisible frequencies that are actually surrounding us, you know. So if you go into nature, that turns all them off. Because if you think how many of you have, like when we used to have old transistor radios and stuff... And if you would put the TV on or put the telly on, it actually affected the radio, you know, because the, the, the frequencies were sort of like getting tangled up with the frequencies of the radio. So it wasn't, you couldn't hear it right. And this is what happens within our daily life, you know, because we've got that many different frequencies, you know, flying around us, man-made ones, you know, as well as man-made ones, you know, ones that, ones that we are making. So when you get out in the nature and when you get out into realness, okay, all of this stops. It cuts off and all you, you connect with is the trees, you know, and the little animals that are there and, you know, everything like that. But there is a realness, the superficialness, the falseness, the man-made shit goes you know, and you actually listen to sort of mother made mother nature made shit, you know, and that's what you feel and that's why you feel revived. OK, so <laughs> I hope that made sense. I, I, I don't I, I don't know if any of that has actually made sense. It's making sense, the images that are shown in my head, but I don't know if I've communicated that right. But and um, that was one of the things I got today as well, that, you know, it's it's about just communicating your truth. You know, that's it. So. Whatever you've got to say, say it. I did have, sorry, in my dream the other night when I said it was really strange, I had, there was like, I don't know if it was some sort of psychic surgery, but there was like beings. <laughs> That's all I can say that they were. They were like beings around me. And they were looking down on me and they were trying to force something from my mouth. And I was actually like, I was choking like that. 
and they were trying to bring something out of me uh, and I feel that these are things that I haven't said things that I've been quashing and stuff like that as well so like I say with this it's speak your truth live your truth you know be in the truth you know and be in the truth of the world not this superficial fake bubble that we are led to believe is life that is not life you know it's it's not life you don't need a keyboard to live a life you know you actually yeah that is when you get bored that that's what they're saying that is boredom it's it's a distraction you know so go out and live with live things <laughs> that's it things that are living as well so like i say have an absolutely fabulous day if anybody would like a reading with me please get in touch i am away next week um i've got something really exciting happening uh, i can't talk about it just yet but i will next week but i'm away next week so i won't be able to do any readings and it's my birthday as well so i'm i'm taking a little bit of time off but if anybody would like a reading i do still have i think one emergency for today and one for tomorrow if not then if you book in for the week following that okay but have an absolutely fabulous day i hope you all feel the massive shift now with mercury going direct and that pisces moon tomorrow is just going to be absolutely beautiful okay so be prepared to have your eyes open to beauty rather than the wrongs of the world sat now <laughs>